Not long ago, I teased a video I was going to release where I go into detail about the absolute nightmare that is YouTube TV. I was going to go in depth. I was going to talk about creators for change, YouTube's heinous CEO. I had skits lined up. I was very passionate about it. I was sort of disheartened, however, when some of my plans fell through, but I did go back to the drawing board, revise the script, and film the whole thing on a shitty camera. While editing it, however, I was very disappointed in the quality of it, and that's saying something coming from me. So the video was scrapped. Other things happened as well, and if you're interested, I made an update video explaining why I've been so extremely lax in uploading content. If you're interested in the corporate nightmare that is YouTube TV, Dave Cullen at Computing Forever did a great job to this. I'll leave a link in the description. In fact, I'll be leaving links to nearly everything I go over, so I urge you to look at them. Long story short on the YouTube TV mess, YouTube TV is the culmination of a two-tier media platform where networks and YouTube Red creators were heavily promoted at the top, and the backbone of YouTube, the users and creators such as you and I, are put at the bottom. I was already questioning whether or not I should even be using a site that was fundamentally against what made it so great to begin with, and then Google said, hold my beer, I can do far fucking worse. So let's start with what more or less sparked my and many others attention on this. The way professor and lecturer Jordan Peterson's YouTube channel was suddenly and without warning shut down for violating terms of service. Now I've personally been striked on my own channel for violating community guidelines and wasn't given an explanation as to what part of my video did this. YouTube was very vague with me. In fact, YouTube's pretty vague when they communicate with anybody. But having your whole channel disabled for making lectures, which by the way are hardly offensive, is a whole other thing. However, not only was Peterson's channel shut down, but his Google account was disabled with no explanation. He did eventually get it back though, and it's not hard to imagine why. He made a big fuss over it, as would probably anyone, and got attention from news outlets and other influential people. Also, Jordan Peterson is pretty well known through social media, and has a pretty big presence on Patreon as well. He's not small time. Keep that in mind. Here's a little funny coincidence for you. The ADL, the group that considers a cartoon frog a hate symbol, no I'm not joking, tweeted that it's proud to be a part of YouTube's new Trusted Flaggers program. What's that? Well, you remember YouTube Heroes, right? This is its necessary bastard spawn since the advertising for YouTube Heroes wasn't exactly well received. Let's read a bit, shall we? Back in 2012, we noticed that certain people were particularly active in reporting community guidelines violations with an extraordinarily high rate of accuracy. From this insight, the Trusted Flagger program was born to provide more robust tools for people or organizations who are particularly interested and effective at notifying us of content that violates our community guidelines. Ask yourself, what kind of people are really good at reporting community guidelines violations? What kind of people wake up in the morning and say, Oh boy, I can't wait to purge the YouTubes of all the edgy things that offend me. I may not be able to fly or shoot lasers, but I could still be a hero. Getting laid, what's that? These people are already spending their time doing YouTube's job for them with probably varying degrees of legitimacy, if there's any at all. As part of this program, the trusted flaggers receive access to a tool that allows for reporting multiple videos at the same time. Gee, that sure sounds familiar, and now the ADL's involved. Why is this important? Well, how about I let Tim Poole, one of the closest online journalists to being impartial, speak on that. The problem with what they're doing is that they're partnering with left-leaning groups like, for instance, the Anti-Defamation League. You know, the Anti-Defamation League its defamation is in the title. Their existence is based on dealing with hate speech. Well, I don't know about you, but it's starting to look like there's a certain group of people that just aren't very welcome on YouTube. I'm not sure who they are, though. It just, it just escapes me. Maybe we haven't dug deep enough, guys. Maybe we'll get to see the bigger picture if we just do a little more digging. On the same day Jordan Peterson is dealing with Google closing him out of his accounts, Google released this on their blog. Now before we begin reading into this Orwellian nightmare, I just want to disclose that I have absolutely no problem with videos that outright promote violence on anybody getting taken down. Whether it's an ISIS recruiting video or some methed out trailer bum telling you to kill all the darkies, it's, it's against the law to incite violence and all that trash can go away. Wouldn't hurt my feelings a bit. 
but that's not what concerns me here. A little over a month ago, we told you about the four new steps we're taking to combat terrorist content on YouTube. Better detection and faster removal driven by machine learning, more experts to alert us to content that needs review, tougher standards for videos that are controversial but do not violate our policies, and more work in the counterterrorism space. Now, already, some alarm bells should probably be going off in your head. A learning bot that removes content? Just what are the parameters for its removal, and how effective is it? An important thing to keep in mind is the language being used here in this post. The major selling point, as it was with the Adpocalypse, is that they're focusing on removing terroristic content. But that's not where they're stopping the censorship. Far from it. Controversial content is another thing being targeted. And if you remember the new terms of service, that's a pretty broad term. Of course, our systems are only as good as the data they're based on. Over the past weeks, we've begun working with more than 15 additional expert NGOs and institutions through our Trusted Flagger program, including the Anti-Defamation League, the No Hate Speech Movement, and the Institute for Strategic Dialogue. Well, there you go. These experts are going to be influencing what Mass Flagbot or Zuckerberg 2.0 decides to remove from YouTube. And we're only just now getting to the meat and potatoes of this shit stew. We'll soon be applying tougher treatment to videos that aren't illegal, but have been flagged by users as potential violations of our policies on hate speech and violent extremism. If we find that these videos don't violate our policies, but contain controversial religious or supremacist content, they will be placed in a limited state. The videos will remain on YouTube behind an interstitial, won't be recommended, won't be monetized, and won't have key features including comments, suggested videos, and likes. We'll begin to roll this new treatment out to videos on desktop versions of YouTube in the coming weeks, and we'll bring it to mobile experiences soon thereafter. That's right, soon. If you even so much as say one little mini word that hurts anyone's fifis, you get a one-way ticket to YouTube purgatory. If this was a job for you, if you're making your living on YouTube, then you better shape the fuck up, mister, and make sure you don't do anything Google or the ADL or Flagbot don't like, or your video will not be recommended. Nobody can like it, and nobody can comment on it. It's really obvious who this will affect first. Political or current event commentary channels, or any channels addressing any kind of controversial issues, such as religion. Jordan Peterson is probably the most tame example of this kind of content that I can think of, and they decided to test the waters with him. So watch out, TJ. It's gonna be much worse than a banana fucking you this time. But no, these type of channels aren't the only ones that are gonna be affected. Tell edgy jokes? Fuck you, purgatory. Talk about internet drama on the wrong person? Fuck you, purgatory. Do a video on historical events that might hurt someone's feelings? Fuck you, purgatory. We started rolling out features from Jigsaw's redirect method to YouTube. When people search for sensitive keywords on YouTube, they will be redirected towards a playlist of curated YouTube videos that directly confront and debunk violent extremist messages. You ever wondered what it's like to be cucked virtually? Well, Google's got it down to a science. You see, not only will people not be able to find your video on the sensitive topic they searched for, they'll also only be able to see suggestions for videos that argue against yours. Gosh, if that isn't just a giant fuck you to anyone outside of Google's bubble, I don't know what is. We also continue to amplify YouTube voices speaking out against hate and radicalization through our YouTube Creators for Change program. One thing I think is worth noting is that when I was gathering information for the YouTube TV video I ended up scrapping, two things kept popping up. One was YouTube CEO, Susan would, Susan would, Susan whatever. Now I could do a whole other video on Susan, but I'm just gonna leave some links to videos on her. I think if you watch them, you'll get a pretty good idea of what kind of person she is, and what kind of ideas she has for YouTube. The other thing that popped up in my research and here as well is the Creators for Change program. If you look at these Creators for Change, you'll notice that they all tend to have a pretty similar worldview, pretty similar political perspective. 
The same can be said about Susan, by the way. I mean, for fuck's sake, one of the creators for change is Francesca Ramsey, one of the biggest liars and bigots on YouTube. And I'm not exaggerating either. Go watch some of her videos. Do a little digging on Francesca Ramsey. It is mind-boggling that she has any kind of credibility after some of the shit she said. But that's who's in the driver's seat here. These are the kind of people heading this program to wipe people off of YouTube. As much as this company seems to have a love for diversity, they sure as hell seem to really only have room for one way of thinking. There's no room for ideological diversity. Don't just take my word for it. There's a Google employee who tends to believe that what's going on is exactly that. So after all this information about mass flagging and content purgatory, if you're a small-time YouTuber like me, do you think Google will give you the same attention as they did Jordan Peterson? What kind of communication or cooperation will YouTube give you on this? Hell, how much do they give you now? I think it's pretty clear, YouTube doesn't give a fuck about you. Did they give a fuck about creators during the adpocalypse? Who gets more screwed on a copyright claim, the claimant or the person getting striked? Unless you're part of YouTube Red, YouTube didn't give a fuck about you when they rolled out YouTube TV, and if this censorship campaign is anything to go off of, they surely don't give a fuck about you now. Oh, you trying to provoke people? Get them asking questions? Hush, baby. Go to your corner. You need a timeout. That joke, JonTron? I, I don't know. It might hurt my sister's precious feelings. I don't think you really need that AdSense money. In fact, I don't think your fans should even know about this video. And here I am. <laughs> telling you this on a video on YouTube. It'll be on it, it'll be up on Vidme and Minds too, but it's really sad when you think about it. It's like when someone won't leave an abusive relationship. Yeah, I know Susan threw me down the stairs, but she'll change. I just got to be strong for the both of us. Yeah, so I'm I'm fucking done. Feel free to mirror this video on YouTube and share it around. Because at the end of this month, I'm nuking this fucking YouTube channel. I don't know. I just, I'd like to keep my Gmail account. I'm, I'm just lazy like that. I'll be on Minds and Vidme until they decide to go full retard as well. But yeah, if you haven't got the gist of it right now, let me just spell it out for you. There is no you 